streaming live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and BlastTheRadio.com, this is The Lowell Green Show. The number to call and be heard around the world is 613-413-2217 or email Lowell at BlastTheRadio.com. And now, here is Lowell Green. Hey, John. A lot, of, a lot of misinformation and misunderstanding concerning the notwithstanding clause. Doug Ford and the Ontario government being dragged through the mud, the labor union there threatening some sort of revolution. And uh, even a lot of parents are, are very upset. It's a too draconian. They just simply don't understand. I mean, let's, let's just go back. Every single government in Canada, provincial and federal, not municipalities, but every provincial and federal government since pretty well confederation at some point has introduced and passed back to work legislation. Even the NDP, when they were in power in Ontario, did it more than once, back to work legislation. Nobody really objected in most cases. They said, well, you know, the government's got to have some, it's, it, there has to be some end to these strikes, particularly in the public sector where the public has to pay. But all of this changed in 2015 when a very left-wing Supreme Court of Canada ruled, in fact, they, over, they overruled a number of other Supreme Court decisions, but in 2015, the Supreme Court of Canada ruled that the right to strike was constitutional. They placed a right to strike in the Constitution. Thus it is that since 2015, any attempt to pass back-to-work legislation is illegal. And in fact, the Kathleen Wynne government found this because uh, they for several years, they froze teacher wages and other wages. They took this to court, and the court ruled that this was unconstitutional, that the government did not have the right to freeze wages, that it was not constitutional. So the government, that's we taxpayers, were fined $100 million. That's fairly recent, folks. So if today... If you want to pass legal laws, the laws that will stand up to a challenge against the Constitution, it's got the only answer, the only way to, to legislate back-to-work legislation is to introduce the notwithstanding clause. The notwithstanding clause says that notwithstanding any court order, including Supreme Court, the government of Ontario or whatever, says this is the will of the people, this is the law. Notwithstanding what the present law may say, we, the government, have the right to overrule it. So that's what the notwithstanding clause is. But essentially, it's just the same. It's, it's essentially the same as all other governments, as I repeat, federal and provincial in this country, at some point in their lifetime, introduced back-to-work legislation, and that's what this is. The problem now is, in order to have back-to-work legislation that is constitutional, in other words, that is legal, it's got to be the notwithstanding clause. So I just I just want to point that out because a lot of people don't know this. They're thinking that somehow or other Doug Ford is bringing down this terrible sledgehammer and so forth. No, he has introduced or has passed now legislation, which is the only way that the government has any control over over strikes. Otherwise, without this, uh, let's face it, anybody could go on strike, including, by the way, fire, police, soldiers, and doctors, nurses. And you know, if if they went, uh, the the law of Canada now says the Supreme Court that everybody has the right to strike. Which stop and think about it. You know, th this means that police have the right to strike, legal right to strike. They, they've never chosen to use that, but they, they do. So very clearly, if, if police decided that they wanted to strike, or firemen, or doctors, or whoever, uh, the only avenue we would have to stop that, to prevent that, would be the notwithstanding clause, which is what Doug Ford and the Ontario government has introduced 
to try and stop the strike of, of uh, education workers. Very clearly, it hasn't worked. The education workers have chosen to defy the law, to break the law. My only hope is, is that the full weight of the law comes down on their shoulders. If, if, um, if the full weight of the law has been applied to those involved in the so-called freedom convoy, shackles, chains, jail time, no, no, uh, uh, <laughs> no bail, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, then I think the same thing should apply to those who are breaking this law. Break the law, break the law. If you break the law and you're in the convoy, you go to jail, you're shackled, all the rest of it. Well, if you break this other law, whether you're a teacher, whoever you are, you should go to jail and be shackled. So I, I, equality is supposed to be equality of the law. You may have some opposing views here. The other thing that I find very upsetting, and I've, I've said this on, on Facebook, is that most of the sympathy seems to be towards the workers. But for me, the, the sympathy, if, if that's the appropriate word, should be applied to the students. Our students in this country and in Ontario have been subjected to some very, very unfortunate conditions. For two and a half years, they were in class, out of class, had to wear masks, no, I mean, it was terrible. And as a consequence, the quality of education, and we're beginning to find this out, has deteriorated, which means that our children to this point, for the last two, two and a half, have been denied a proper education. This government said, and I give it credit, said, listen, they've had enough of this disruption. We want to make sure that there is stability in the classroom. So we are going to, if we have to, we're going to pass legislation, which in this case is the notwithstanding clause, to prevent a strike. The, the teachers, education workers, etc., have decided, the education workers have decided to break the law. Okay, you broke the law. As far as I'm concerned, you are, you are conducting an illegal strike, which it is, and the full weight of the law should descend upon you. That's my feeling. No sympathy whatsoever. You break the law, I don't care. You know, if, if we can be, I repeat, if we can be that tough on people involved with the convoy, we can freeze the bank accounts of people who donated $20 to a legal protest. We can bloody well put, as, as far you know what? There's 55,000 workers. If I were the premier, now, the premier doesn't have the right to do this. But if I did have the right, I'd fire them all. I, I, would, I would do what Ronald Reagan did with the air traffic controllers. I'd say, listen, you're, you're all, you're performing an illegal strike now. You're all fired. And you know, if, if, if we've got to go someplace else to hire people, so, so be it. We won't do that because it's the school boards, the individual school boards who have the right to hire and fire. But somehow or other, I mean, in the end, <clears throat> excuse me, in the end, governments have got to have control over taxpayers' dollars. The the education workers are asked for a wage are asking for a wage increase of over eleven percent a year over four years, which would mean they are asking for a forty five percent increase in salary over the next four years. I mean, very clearly, the government can't do that. Government doesn't. The government doesn't have that money. We don't have the money. So at some point, the government's got to, if the, if the government has its hands, if they're the bankers, at some point, the government's got to be able to say no. And in this case, to say no requires a notwithstanding clause. So I just wanted to point that out for you. And uh, as I say, most of the sympathy seems to be with, with the workers. I, I've, I've done some more research on this. According to the union itself, now we had a couple calls yesterday, people saying, oh, well, you know, the education workers only making 30. According to the union itself, the average pay of education workers, these people under CUPE, is $39,000. That's the average pay. The entry-level education assistant pay is 36465 Those with more than five years' experience are making over $50,000. That's from the union itself, okay? So I just point that out. Um, I'm, I'm not saying that it's a whole lot of money, but an increase of 2.5% is a bigger increase than the average increase of everybody else in this province. And um, it's, a, it's a bigger increase than federal public servants are going to get. That's Those are the facts, okay? Maybe it's not enough, but it's our money. We don't have a lot of money, okay? But as, if, as I said this yesterday, and I say it again, if it has to come down to which side you have to, you know, somebody has to win here, somebody has to lose. 
And if it involves the students, I say the students should be the ones who win. I think it's disgraceful that once again their education has been disrupted. I think it's sad that so many people don't seem to be sympathetic to the students. I find that really, really unfortunate and sad. John, what are people saying here? Yeah, you're right. And the students are sort of nowhere in the conversation other than what you're bringing it up. And can I ask for a point of clarity? So when you talk about the salary that they're making, yep. uh, this is not necessarily that they're paid salary. A lot of them are part time. Their their total income equates to those numbers. That's yes? right. That's right. The, and this is this is the union itself says that the average salary, in other words, the average income is thirty nine thousand dollars. Right, but a salary is told a salary sort of I think people have the idea that that is an annual thing paid out in regular intervals biweekly whatever. Whatever it is, I'm only using the union's figure itself. They, no, no, fact, I just been, yeah, they've been very vocal in this that 39,000 is not enough. Well, it is okay, it's not enough. The government has offered 2.5% for the per year for the next 4 years. Um which which would bring it uh well up over $40,000. Um that's that's on the average. The with experience, uh, according to the union, experienced education assistants are making the average salary of an exper. I don't know what being by experience. I gather it'd be five or ten years is fifty one thousand three hundred and thirteen dollars a year. I don't think it's that bad to be these. And in many cases, uh, these people are not well educated. Some of them are, but not well educated. And uh, it's an entry level. Uh, and my feeling is people say, well, everybody deserves a living wage. But what, what's a living wage? I mean, for some people, $39,000 is a pretty good living wage. For other people, it, it isn't. I mean, if you're driving a, a Cadillac or a Lincoln or whatever, and uh, you're out eating caviar every night, very clearly 39000 is not enough. <laughs> no, but do you understand my point? And not no, only that, you, you know what? If, if, if this job doesn't pay you enough, my feeling is, okay, go back. You know what? The community colleges, Algonquin College, etc., have wonderful training programs. They will train you to be a chef, where the average salary is a hell of a lot more than fifty thousand. By the way, uh, they'll teach you the the trades. A carpenter these days, a really good carpenter, is making sixty, seventy, maybe more. Mechanic, a ditto, etc. You go. So you know what? If you're not making enough as a as an education assistant, then go back to Algonquin, get trained to be something else to make more money. Go ahead, John. What are people Agree, saying? Agreed. And and that, by the way, is, let's just apply that to every single industry, no matter what. If you're not happy with the salary you're making, go find a salary you're happy with. You're not entitled to that. I, right. I, our, our son did this, to be honest with you. A great sure. guy. He was he, he was working. He had a, a pretty good job. <laughs> um, but he figured, you know what? My skills are, I'm going to. So he went back to Algonquin, took a four-year course. He continued to work while he was doing this. So it was night courses and so forth. He trained. To, to be a much, much more educated, whatever you call it, computer operator. He knows all of these latest things. With the, and, and guess what? He got a hell, much better job. Okay. Amazing, right? He did this while still working and, and supporting himself. Go ahead. It's one of my biggest regrets of my own career that I never took the chance and the opportunity to go and make more money. Instead, it's I available. sat there bitching I mean, these, and moaning. Exactly. Yeah, the co community colleges are fantastic, no matter what you want to be. I mean, as, as I say, if you want to be a chef, they'll train you there, yep. a carpenter, a, you know, a welder, whatever it is. It's yep. all it's all available to you. Go ahead. All right, let's get to the comments on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, etc. 613-413-2217 is the number. Your direct line to the Lowell Green Show. Uh, all of your links at lowellgreen.com. Joshua says, salary for support staff is not a new issue. I spoke to someone a while back who told me they make only $2 an hour more than they did 10 years ago. Why did QP never strike any time in the interim? The same issue was present. Ah, but now our children are being made into bargaining chips. They have had two years disrupted due to COVID. Now is the time to strike, literally and figuratively it's all tactic and political ploys the union and government and a tug of war with our children caught in the middle and it's disgusting from both sides well i don't know what's disgusting about the the government side i'm sorry it's the government's response the government says listen our children have been disrupted enough we want to make sure that they have stability in the classroom what do you find wrong with that i don't understand what, what has the government done wrong here They've offered two and a half percent. How much do you think they should offer? Two and a half percent is more than the average increase of everybody else in the province. So what, what, what's the government done wrong here? 
It's your money. Do you want to I mean, do, should they get the, the, the workers are asking for over 11 percent a year? Should the government ha hand them 11 percent? Can you imagine you give the workers 11 percent more? Uh, the teachers are going to want 11 percent more. The average salary of teachers is seventy five thousand dollars. Many of them making well over one hundred thousand dollars. You want to give them an increase of forty five percent in the next four years. That's what that's what would happen if, if the government caved in to the workers and gave them the 11 percent. It's forty five percent over the next four years. The teachers would demand exactly the same and they go and strike if they didn't get it. I mean, what do you want the government to do? What's the government done wrong here? Is it right? Is it right or wrong to want students to have some stability in the classroom? Is that wrong? Go ahead, please. And I would suggest that the government also has a responsibility to defend you and I, the taxpayer. Absolutely. Absolutely. We are taxed to death now. Tax is killing us. If we're going to give, if we're going to give the workers and teachers a 45% increase over the next four years, are you prepared to pay a 45% more in taxes? Please respond, please. I'm 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 getting really ticked off with some of this, you know. What do you expect the government to do? That are, are they right to say that students have a must remain in the classroom? They've had enough disruption. Is that wrong? Go ahead, John. Right. So the question is, what is the responsible raise? I think two and a half percent is is most fair, and, well, and a lot of people seem to be on side with that. Saying, look, they're not getting two and a half percent increases. Precisely. Are your pension getting two and a half percent increases? Probably uh, not. Are you Are you serious? Uh, the fact of the matter is that most people who do not have union protection are not getting any raises. Go ahead, please, John. Fire the lot of them, says Eileen, very simply. All right, here's an email from Lisa to Lowell at BlastTheRadio.com. Lowell, this, is, this should come as no surprise to anyone that teachers would be on strike. Except, Lisa, it's not the teachers. It's the support staff. Let's be clear. She goes on to say, anyone with half a clue would have seen this coming. This is Ford's fault. He enacted Bill 124. Revoke Bill 124, says Lisa. What's, what's 124? I don't know. I was hoping it's, not, it's not Ford's fault, but I mean, he has a responsibility to to make sure that the students can get a decent education. That's that's job one. Yep. Job two is to make sure that we our money is spent properly, judiciously. That's job two. OK, that's what he's trying to do here. Go ahead. Michelle says taxpayers are not a bottomless pit. We pay more than enough already. Mike says I am not prepared to pay more. Uh, let's go to lunch review, Terry. Uh, no, let's go to, uh, Michelle. Totally agree with you. Lowell Murray says, no matter what, the teachers will think they are overworked and underpaid. Maggie's on Facebook saying hospital staff only got a 1% increase. Education workers should get the same. After, let me just give you some more figures. Okay. The starting salary in Ontario for a teacher is 51,263. After 15 years, the average salary of a teacher after 15 years is 94812 plus benefits like you cannot believe. I just, just throw that out. So if, if we give workers 45% increase over four years, teachers are going to demand the same thing. The average salary then of a teacher would go up to almost $90,000. Uh, those after 15 years would make about $125,000. Do you want to pay taxes to pay that? Go ahead. If you do. People I'd forget sure that like part, to... right? Yeah. Yep, they seem to forget. Uh, Valda says these children should not be behind, put behind the greed line again. Uh, after the last couple of years, it's time for the children to come first. Absolutely. Kathy, what happened at, the, at this time? You know what? I would have more sympathy for the workers, except for the fact that for two and a half years, our kids have really not received a proper education. And you know, I, I got a, I got some people responding on Facebook saying, and I said, well, you know, if you want to give the right to strike to everybody, should police be allowed to strike, firemen, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, soldiers, doctors? And they say, well, no, they, that's life saving. Well, wait a minute. Can I tell you something? <laughs> that that is a matter in in some cases of life and death when it comes to education there is no question and there are all sorts of statistics to prove this that when students are disrupted through strikes etc cetera, etc cetera, some of them drop out now not all kids who drop out turn out bad but the chances that a kid who has dropped out and does not have a proper education of turning to a life of crime or even suicide i'm sorry are higher the facts are there, folks. So when you say, well, that's not a matter of life and death, in some cases it is. In some cases it is. Go ahead, please. Let's get a word in here for Shields. 
Yeah, I uh, I want to thank Shields as I've uh, already announced on Facebook. This is my my last show, John. Um, and I I want to thank all of the listeners. I won't have much time to do it. I want to thank all of the the, the loyal listeners, uh, not only on this show but have, I guess in some cases listened to me since I started talk shows in 1966. But I do want to thank Shields. They've stuck with me. Uh, as sometimes it hasn't been easy uh, when you're. Like a staunch conservative like me, an opinionated son of a bitch like me, uh, you and you sponsor, you get complaints. And they've got some complaints from people who threaten boycotts and so forth. They stuck with me. And it's been good for their business. I want to thank the people who have, who have gone to Shields and been pleased with the service. So uh, I just want to thank them for sticking with me for this this period of time. Uh, the only sponsor that that has the nerve and the guts to stay with me. If they got the nerve and the guts to stay with me. I, I wish that You'd stick with them. Thank you all. Thank you, uh, Shields. John, what what's what other comments have we got? Yeah, a lot of people sort of you know saw your Facebook comment. There's a lot of comments on that. And I know you don't want to dwell on it. So no, I don't. It's uh, it's it's time. It's uh, my yes. Yesterday's show bothered me a little bit. I was not very sharp. I found myself uh, a little muddy in my descriptions, etc. And uh, I'm 86 years old. I've got health problems, so it's time. I've had a good run. And uh, John, I hope that you'll continue. I think we've started something. something I intend good to. Here. Well, good. With, I, your, I with your blessing, with your blessing, I absolutely intend to. Well, I, I, I certainly will bless you. Yeah, for whatever, whatever good that is. You want me to light a candle? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm afraid of all the flying fox farts and what might happen to them if you light. The a only thing is, you may find yourself in purgatory if you, if you stick at it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're dwelling on this, and I know you didn't want to. Um, yeah. But can I, can I personally just say thank you for taking a chance on me when you put it out there to the universe that you knew that there was a way to do the show on the internet. And a lot of people, you and I were not friends on Facebook, and a lot of people said you need to talk to John Milky, and you took a chance on me. And I'm forever grateful for that. This is yeah, it was great. a little frustrating at first, and but I think we we finally uh, resolved. And and thanks to your tenacity, stuck with it, and we come up with a system that that works yeah. pretty well. Yeah, we finally right. get shit figured out, and you're leaving. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> 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 All right, back to the conversation. Chris says, just quick math: eleven point seven percent annually is compounded, so it's actually fifty five point seven percent over the next four years. The largest baked in raise proposition I have ever. Heard, he says that was the demand of the unions and people are saying they they deserve this okay well uh, as i point out if the workers got the, the 55 or whatever the hell it is teachers would demand the same and if they didn't get it they would strike so we would be we would be paying uh, average salary in ontario around 125 thousand dollars a top salary probably 150 thousand dollars for uh well go ahead we do have a phone call coming in. I haven't had a chance to screen it, but hey, let's take a chance. Hi there. Can we get your name, please? It's Chris. Chris, go ahead. You're on live with Lowell Green. Yeah, Lowell, I've been listening to you probably since the uh, 70s. Okay. And just to call you on the radio. So Did you? Good for I, you. I'm gonna miss, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss your show. I try to tune in as much as I can. And it's always amazing to me how you have insights on things. No matter how many newspapers I read or broadcasts I listen to in the media, you always have a new, fresh perspective on things, and, and it really um, enlightens me. And I just wanted to thank you for all the years for doing that. Thank you. Very kind. Very kind. Um, I've been at it a long time, and, uh, and over the years, you, you get to um, – one, one of the abilities that I have, and God-given, obviously, is I, I can read something – uh, and five years later, and I can immediately identify it as something that I may want to use, and I'll store it away. And four or five years later, I can pick that out of my mind. I'm I'm very fortunate that way. I don't think I'm a savant. I'm just a son of a bitch that can remember a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead, well, you John. You really contribute a lot to this community. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. I appreciate I appreciate that, Chris. I sure tried. Thank you, Thank John. You, Chris. What else do we got here? All right, uh, let's go to Clifford. 45%, are they crazy, he asks? Well, according to somebody compounded, it's about 55%. I'm not a mathematician. That's one thing I never I never can, I never profess to be. Well, strong men shudder when I try to do math. Go ahead. 
Let's go to Paul. He has emailed in to say, Hi, Lowell. Thanks for the explanation about the Supreme Court decision. I'd been waiting to hear about back-to-work legislation. I know it's hard with inflation for everybody, but surely after all the remote learning our kids have had, the school workers can keep at work for the sake of the kids. Me, Maybe in the meantime, we can get some agreement to go to arbitration and settle the pay increase, but we surely cannot afford increases at our present inflation rate of about 7% for all public sector workers. Yeah, it's it's true. There's got to be a limit here. Uh, there's no question that that overall public public sector workers are being better paid on average than those in the private sector, particularly in the federal government. As we all know, that's it's what about 20 percent above. Uh, so it's at some point, governments someplace have got to say, you know what, we've got to be fair here. We don't have this kind of money. We've got to put a stop to it. And they're trying. They're trying. Go ahead, please, John. Lawrence Review Terry's on Twitch. He wants to know if we're, if, if it's going to go from the green line to the milk line. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. Stick with me, folks. We'll have something that I hope yeah, entertains. M- milk that one for all it's worth. <laughs> yeah, I think we've got enough milk puns going on in my station already <laughs> without that. Uh, Todd says, just to be clear, school boards deactivated the workers' swipe cards and took their keys end of shift yesterday. Technically, this is a lockout. I, I don't know. I, I'm disappointed in the school boards. Uh, they were very quick to say, oh, we're going to shut the school down. Excuse me. I don't understand why. You know what? If, if, if you're talking about somebody that mops the floors, then you know what? With all the money the teachers are made, you know, I bet you parents would volunteer to go in and do whatever the hell is required. Lunch monitor. Now, there's some jobs, obviously, that they couldn't. But I, I, I just don't understand why the school boards have decided to shut down this easily. Come on. Go ahead, Mike, Mike asks, what if they do get fined? They say they will go to court and fight it. How many of them will actually have to pay? Well, uh, it's the, the, the legislation provides a fine of $4,000 a day per individual and $500,000 per day for the union. How much for the union, I'm sorry? 500000 per day. Okay. I heard 5,000. I it didn't add up in my mind. 4,000 for the individual. Okay, 50,000 makes more sense. Uh, Michelle, considering how broke every level of government is at the moment, there should be a total freeze on all government employee raises. The cupboard, she says, is bare. The problem with the problem with that goes back to the Supreme Court decision in 2015. Uh, the, 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 it's to freeze the salaries would be unconstitutional. The only way you could freeze salaries or introduce back-to-work legislation is through the notwithstanding clause, which is what Doug Ford has done. The the Supreme Court in 2015 ruled that it is a constitutional right to strike for everybody, including police. So the only way, the only weapon available now is to introduce the notwithstanding clause, which is what Doug Ford had to do. The, 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 The ability to imply or apply back to work legislation does not exist anymore. Just ordinarily trying to freeze our back to work legislation would be unconstitutional. The only way it's constitutional, in other words, legal, is to impose the notwithstanding clause, which is why the Ontario government's done that. Go ahead, John. Let's go to Twitch. Renee's got an interesting question. If they are willing to pay the fines, then why do they need the 11% pay hike? Well, the union says it's going to pay, which means if the union can afford that, boy, oh boy, how much, how much, you know, dues are they charging there? I, I, I think that the unions are just pulling a bluff here. They, they, they think that, ah, uh, they're not going to fine us. They won't do this. No government will do this. I hope, I hope the Ford government takes them to court and, and, and you know what, if you don't pay the fine, spend some time in jail. You sent Tamara Lynch to jail. You send a few other people the convoy to jail for breaking the law. Well, why should it be any different with with workers or teachers? Go ahead. All right, we're under two minutes here. Let's get a few of these comments in as fast as, as I can. As you can see in my last minutes, my last minutes on the air, folks, I, I'm I'm being really tough. I'm just fed up with this. Okay, I'm fed up with it. Um, the students deserve a decent education. They're not getting it. And this is just going to harm them even more. When you harm our students, you harm the country. You do. The country depends upon well-educated people. You cannot run a a democracy without a well-educated population. If the, the more we damage the education of our people, the more we harm our country. And I don't want to harm this country anymore. Uh, John, go ahead, please. 
Well, we're just about at the bottom of the hour. Let's get, I, I did put you just on the screen so you could have your last words, but that's okay. I'll pop in with a couple of extra comments here. Uh, Jason says, thanks to the strike, my daughter has a day off today. Murray says, Ontario's teacher pension fund is one of the largest in Canada. They used to own most of the mines in Western Canada. And Michelle reminds us, EAs are not teachers and should not be paid as much as teachers are. Last word to Leanne says, I think it's disgusting that they're going on strike after everything the kids have been through in the last two and a half years. Final words to you, sir. Well, I just, I, I do want to thank all the loyal listeners. I know that, uh, that many of you people uh, have, have been loyal listeners. You haven't always agreed. I hope you don't always agree. But um, I hope that you'll stick with John um, and support John. I, the, the problem is that there are fewer and fewer forums like this. Uh, it's just uh, increasingly people are not talking with each other. They're texting each other, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we still need to talk to each other, folks. Um, we, we need to hear from you. In fact, I think one of the greatest enemies of this country is, is apathy. And I'll say this about my listeners. If you're a listener to the Lowell Green Show, you are not apathetic. And God bless you all. Thank you. And John, good luck. Carry on, sir. It'll be a different kind of program. But keep people talking. It's important. Thank you all. Goodbye. The Lowell Green Show is seen and heard live around the world at 2 p.m. Eastern. Connect with us online at blasttheradio.com slash Lowell Green. Can't join us live? Download the Lowell Green Podcast. Available on Apple, Spotify, Google, and more. Ask your smart speaker to play the Lowell Green Podcast. This is a production of BlastTheRadio.com.